Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, so, this is our new course, uh, Film Appreciation, and I am going to give you introduction to the course. So, introduction to um, the course, which is called Film Appreciation. This is your summer course. I am your instructor, uh, Aisha Iqbal Vishamohan. I am a professor of Film Studies, Drama and Literature in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences uh, here at IIT Madras. So, uh, these are the uh, principal things that we are going to uh, look into and uh, um, before I start, I would like to just tell you that uh, you must have seen the website of the course and uh, there are a couple of changes in what we are actually going to do uh, in this course. So, uh, the change is not very radical, but it is uh, it has got something to do with the ordering and restructuring of the modules. So, please uh, pay attention to this. So, what you may see on the website in week 1 or week 2 or subsequently uh, subsequent weeks, um, uh, there may be a little change in the order of the modules. We will also be looking at certain theoretical aspects of film studies. Uh, because we feel that that is also important to understand or appreciate cinema and therefore, uh, there is a module uh, uh, added to whatever we have given in the uh, or on the website. So, one of the first things that you are going to learn in this uh, course is plot. So, um, this will be a part of the course. What is the plot? Plot is the narrative foundations upon which all the stories are built. We often say or comment on what kind of a plot was that and this is what we mean. It is the foundation and uh, we should know that text is a verbal written or visual artifact. It is created by us and narrative is the way a story is told. So, this is the difference between narrative and story. Story is the basic outline, narrative is the way it is told. Film combines all these elements and therefore, is more complex or rather most complex of all arts. We should also know that most stories reflect the universal human experiences which are birth, growth, um, going on adventure, facing temptations, falling in love, losing love and uh, finally, life lessons derived and most plots focus on these aspects of life. There is a difference between plot and a screenplay. A screenplay is a script for a film or television show. It includes dialogues as well as the stage directions and character uh, actions and movement. I know that many of you are, are aspiring screenwriters and therefore, you might be interested in this course. Um, so, this is one aspect that you should learn that screenplay is not just the uh, outline story or, or the plot, but it also includes dialogues and stage directions. We will also be looking at uh, semiotics of cinema, which is also called semiology. It is the story of science. Film images are science, uh, S I G N S. Filmmaking is choosing the precise images for the particular story. Now, um, Peter Wallen in Science and Meanings in Cinema talks of science as a triptych index, icon, and symbol and indexical signs lead to something important. Okay? You might have seen uh, index signs like indexical signs like uh, clocks for example, in the mood for love by uh, a movie film uh, by Wong Kar Wai the Chinese director. So, these are uh, these indexical signs are something that point towards something important. You will also learn uh, something about cinematic terms. Why? Because these things will be referred to repeatedly throughout the course. So, you will be learning for instance about concepts such as androgyny, uh, anagnorisis, counterculture, emblematic shots, ethnicity, eth uh, historical films, 
मार्शल आर्ट्स फिल्म्स एक्शन सिनेमा मेटा सिनेमा वॉर फिल्म्स एंड मच मोर वील बी ऑल्सो डूइंग a session on surrealism with particular reference to uh, the F spanish director louis bunel surrealism is a term related to art and theater movement which explores subjective dream states and uh, it is concerned with the uh, with subverting the logic of representation bunel collaborated with salvador dali on ashwa and the law which is an unusual debut film with surrealist images and uh, it has one of the most iconic images of the surrealist cinema which is that of a hand slicing a woman's eyeball this uh, uh, this clip is uh, rather the movie is available on youtube and i would like you to watch it surrealism uh, uh, is also a technique which demonstrated bunel's obsession with playing with the narrative and uh, when we talked about this eye splicing scene it cuts to a cloud drifting along the moon and we the viewers get the sense that the narrative is seemingly uh, you know not very logical the film was shot in 2 weeks and was really a shocker and we are talking about 1928 when uh, uh, you know cinema was uh, rather conventional okay we will also talk about cinematography and editing techniques so the film editor is imp is responsible for putting the pieces together into a coherent shots films are made using shots so they are film using shots and shots are pieced together placed together and that is the editor's job and he or she must guide our thoughts associations and emotional responses effectively from one image to another or from one sound to another, another so that the interrelationships of separate images and sounds are clear and the transitions between sign, scenes and sequences are smooth to achieve the goal the editor must consider the aesthetic dramatic and psychological effect of the juxtaposition of image to image sound to sound or image to sound and plays each piece of film and soundtrack together accordingly in this re, in this relation uh, we will be also talking about uh, editing te techniques such as jump cut and montage in the past um, uh, filmmakers made uh, routine use of several optical effects created in the film lab during the printing of the film to create smooth and clear transitions between a film's most important divisions such as between two sequences that take place at a different place or time now these transitional uh, devices include wipe which is a new uh, when a new image is separated from the previous image by means of a horizontal vertical or diagonal uh, fine that uh, moves across the screen to wipe the previous image away there is a flip frame where the entire frame appears to flip over to reveal a new scene creating a visual effect very similar to turning a page there is also fade out fade to the last image of one sequence fades momentarily to black and uh, the first image of the next sequence is gradually eliminated there is also the famous dissolve the end of one shot uh, which will and it uh, gradually merges into the beginning of the next so the effect is produced by superimposing a fade out on to a fade in of equal length or imposing one scene over another see all examples of all these scenes uh, or all these uh, concepts are very uh, easily available on the net all you have to do is to uh, key in uh, terms such as dissolve or wipe or fade and you will get what you want uh, i would also at this point try to Uh, make uh, an announcement that due to copyright reasons we might not be able to show you actual clippings or even stills from films but uh, we will be referring to these and uh, uh, you will also find that uh, um, perhaps i would like uh, i would give you a couple of links at the beginning of lectures and i would ask you to watch that uh, go to the link watch that particular sequence and come back to us okay so that would uh, make the discussion easier apart from editing and cinematographic techniques we'll be talking about narrative we will talk about how shots 
are taken and how frames are used by filmmakers. We will also talk about elements of mise en scène, which is literally putting on stage. It's a French term uh, which originates from the theater, where it designates everything that appears on stage, including sets, colors, lighting, character movements, elements of visual it, uh, st uh, style, and it is designed to create the narrative space and help progress the narrative. We will also be talking about cult films. Uh, for example, uh, I know for most of you, cult, a cult film would be something like uh, Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction, a kind of film that has a dedicated set of followers. They watch it over and again and discuss various aspects of it. They also try to uh, interpret the film in its own way. Cult films have a huge following um, among a particular set or group of people. We will also talk about remakes and the theory of remakes, particularly as given to us by Constantin Verovis in film remakes, uh, which talks about remaking as uh, industrial category, as textual category and also as critical uh, category. Remaking is a very integral part of uh, world cinema, Indian cinema, regional cinema and we will be talking about that because uh, I am sure some of you are interested in this aspect of cinema also along with adaptation. Many of you who are uh, perhaps in college, you might be having a course such as literature and adaptation or film adaptation where we talk about how a text is translated onto screen and we will be talking about what is lost and what is gained through this transition or adaptation. We will also discuss elements of full length feature films as compared to short films and documentary. At this point, I would urge you to watch a movie by Roman Polanski and it is one of his earliest films called Two Men and a Wardrobe. So, uh, this is a short film that I would like you to watch. We will also talk about as I have already told you, um, the seminal features of documentary. Our next uh, um, area of interest would be genre. Genre is a French word and it means a category or a type or a collection of instantly recognizable stylistic features. It is addressed as a system for organizing production as well as groupings of individual films which have collective and singular significance. From the commercial point of view, genres are important because there is a demand for these categories. Classification of films into genres has always helped the film industry to produce and market films. There are variety of genres. We will be discussing this if particularly with reference to mythologicals, musicals and also action cinema, which I know most of you enjoy a lot. We will also be talking about traditions in world cinema. Now, what do you understand by traditions in world cinema? How uh, cinema has evolved over a period of uh, over 100 years or so. There have been major uh, cinematic movements, experiments all over the world. So, we have instances of German expressionism, uh, which uh, started in Germany, but it had a far reaching influence, uh, particularly with reference to the device of expressionism, the theory of expressionism. We will also talk about Italian neorealism, French new wave and French new wave is very influential. It had a far reaching influence, particularly on uh, cinemas of other countries such and even America, where uh, the entire American um, new Hollywood period, you know, starting from the late 60s. It all owes and is very uh, uh, largely um, indebted to the French New Wave and the seminal filmmakers of this period, such as uh, uh, Francois Truffaut and Jean Liu Godard. We will be also talking, we will also talk about British New Wave, Iranian and Latin American cinema, all, and also transnational Chinese cinema. Uh, of course, uh, a major thrust of this course would be on Indian cinema. We, I will be doing a module on introduction to Indian cinema. We will be talking about the history and uh, growth of Indian cinema, uh, the contribution of the great Dada Sahab Palake, uh, the studio system such as Bombay Talkies. We will talk about early films such as uh, 
um, mythologicals and uh, overall how um, the history of Indian cinema is important to understand our cinema. We will talk about various theatre and art forms such as uh, painting, I have already talked about surrealism, we will also talk, we will also talk about other art forms such as cubism, etcetera. Uh, I have already to informed you that we will talk about neorealism and also realism. Realism is something that uh, finds its roots in the uh, literature, in the writings of uh, French writers such as uh, Honoré de Bolza, Emile Zola, Gustave Flaubert. Um, and uh, and uh, Zola is also famously associated with the naturalistic tradition in literature and cinema. Historically, this is a point where artists reacted against the romantic movement of the 18th and early 19th century. So, we will be looking at realism and one of the uh, seminal works in this area has been done by the film critic, the French film critic André Bézon and we will be looking at his theories as well. We will be also talk, uh, we will also be talking about uh, the uh, growth of theatre and its influence rather than the growth of theatre, the influence of theatre on cinema. Uh, coming to Indian cinema, we will talk about the importance accorded to song and dance elements in films, the formulaic -like film which are so popular, the genres and the formulas in films. We will talk about as I have already told you mythology and also musicals both in India and Hollywood. They were in Hollywood, uh, we do not find too many musicals nowadays, but once upon a time musicals was uh, a very important, very successful and popular genre in Hollywood as well. In India, of course, it goes without saying that musicals still exist and are extremely popular. We will talk about masculine charisma and also stardom uh, when we discuss Indian cinema and Hindi film stars, rather uh, Indian film stars. We will talk about Melodrama in uh, Indian cinema, melodrama is in the films are or Indian films are rather known for their melodramatic aspect. Uh, melodrama has its uh, um, a, a good definition of melodrama is provided by the great M. H. Abrams in his uh, uh, book called Literary Terms, where he mentions that the terms melodrama and melodramatic are uh, uh, in an extended sense applied to any literary work or episode whether in drama or prose fiction that relies on implausible events and sensational action. Melodrama in this sense was a standard fare in cowboy and Indian and cops and uh, robber types of silent films and remains alive and flourishing in current cinematic and television productions. Again according to the film critic. David Thompson, melodrama on film is often a world in which a few people live amid shadow. The image sustains the thought the, um, that uh, uh, romantic dreams are the pivot of life. These days the term melodramatic is used mostly to dismiss a film as excessive and not worthy of discussion, but then that is not really uh, true because uh, uh, there has been a resurgence of interest in serious studies, academic studies of melodrama and uh, in India people have done good work on melodrama and Indian cinema and uh, in Hollywood the cinema of Douglas Sirk are studied for the melodramatic content. Uh, we will be talking about the so called categories A list films and B list films also as uh, along with canonical films. Coming to India, we will also talk about canonical Indian films as well as parallel cinema in India which are not so mainstream. Parallel cinema is generally associated with the late 60s, efflorescence of cinema in the late 60s and the early uh, 70s and it went on till the mid 80s okay, where, when we had films like Ardh Sakte and Jane Bido Yaro and Earth. So, we are talking about that kind of movement and uh, for a while there was a dip in this kind of cinema, but then Avaga cinema has found uh, its voice again in India and I will be talking about post liberalization films in India, where we will be discussing mainstream 
films, NRI films as well as Avagad films, especially with people like Dibakar Banerjee, um, Anurag Kashyap and uh, Balki uh, at the helm of these films. So, um, I am glad to see you here on the for this course and we will be having regular interactions. So, <coughs> keep watching this space for more. Thank you very much.